Hello everybody. If you are anything like me, I'm going to offer you a bit of unsolicited advice coming from this week's Parsha that we read in Israel, Shlach. Now in Parsha Shlach, it opens up with Hashem telling Moshe, he says, send for yourself men to survey the land and to bring back a report. And Moshe picks 12 men of renown good reputation, good men who thinks they can do the job well, um, to go and to bring back a report. Now, they go and they come back and 10 of these 12 men, I'm going to read you what they say. They say, we arrived at the land to which you have sent us, and indeed it flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit, this big, beautiful fruit. And here's where it goes wrong. They say FS, but FS means big fat zero. Everything they said before is going to amount to zero because now here comes the bad news. The people that dwells in the land is powerful. The, city, the cities are very greatly fortified. And we also saw there the offspring of the giant. Amalek dwells in the area of the south. The Hittite and Jebusite and Amorite dwell in the mountain. The Canaanite dwells by the sea and on the bank of the Jordan. And now apparently the people get hysterical and they turn towards Moshe and start yelling. This is conjecture based on the next Pasuk, the next words that come directly after the ones I just read you. It says, Kalev then silenced the people towards Moshe and said, we shall surely ascend and conquer it for we can surely do it. Okay. Now, the only reason we have to assume that we're told that he signs the people towards Moshe is because they were probably screaming at him. And he says, we can do it. Stop panicking. We can definitely do it. What happens then? The other 10 people um, who were speaking originally turned to him and they said towards the rest of the nation, we cannot ascend to the people for it's too strong for us. They brought forth to the children of Israel an evil report on the land that they had spied out. Now the words in um, in Hebrew is that a yotziu dibat haaretz. The yotziu is to bring forth something. Uh, they meaning they either grossly exaggerated or they fabricated the next words that come out of their mouth, which are the land through which we pass to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. All the people we saw there were huge. There we saw the Nephilim, the sons of the giant from among the Nephilim, and we were like grasshopper in our eyes, and so we were in their eyes. And now what happens is there's just national hysteria, panic, chaos in the camp. They're crying all night. They want to pick somebody, a new leader, turn back, return to Egypt. And Moshe and Aaron are devastated, and they fall on their faces, and we're told that um, Yeshua ben Nun, and um, Kali and Yifuna, they uh, rip their clothes, sign a warning. They're distraught from what's going on. They, they just can't believe it. And they stand up and they're going to try and right this wrong. They speak up and they say, the land through that we pass through to spy out, the land is very, very good. I love that. Tov ha'aretz ma'od ma'od. And he, they say, that if Hashem desires us, he will bring us to this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. But do not rebel against Hashem. You should not fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and Hashem is with us. Do not fear. Uh, and here they say a lot of truth, a lot of truth. And I love that they don't say, uh, listen, we know we're going to do it and everything's going to be okay. They, what they do say is if Hashem desires us, meaning that any time that we find favor in the eyes of God, he's on our side and he promised us that we can go in the land, we can go in the land. And everything that we saw is a gift. All these big, strong people that were in the land, they prepared the land for us. We're going to go and we're going to conquer. And everything that they did is, is their bread. They set the table for them. Basically, all they have to do is conquer the land and everything that they need is there ready for the nation. It's it's a gift from God. And they're saying, just don't be afraid. This is, this is what God said to do. We can do it. But what happens? The entire assembly 
want, wanted to kill them. He said, let's pelt them with stones. And then God came in and interfered to save the life of Yehoshua and Kalev. Now, there's so much to talk about uh, as an episode. I can go on forever, but I really just want to focus on something that um, a message for us to take that I try and find strength in, and that is Kalev. Kalev is one of the bravest characters uh, in the Bible, if you think about it. He went, um, he was just, when we're told about him in the first place, he's, he's just thrown in somewhere in the middle. He's just one of these 12 people. And when he spoke out, he saw these 10 people, it says, with, with the, when they spoke, they said they brought back a Davar. They were united. There was one thing, a Davar, one word. They were united in their purpose of what they were going to say, how they were going to represent it. And it was really a force to contend with. We know 10 is a powerful force. We say 10 people, it makes a minion. There's 10 people to speak out against those people who already have a plan and that the whole nation already believed it and are in the throes of panic. Um, most people would say, I, I'm going to speak up for what purpose? For what purpose against all the people that went? Because at that point, Yeshua didn't speak up uh, in in favor of God and the land yet. He didn't even, as far as we know, he didn't even know that Yeshua would be on his side at that point when he stood up. All he saw was 10 men, one report, a whole nation in panic. Um, and he had the courage and the bravery and he was decisive enough at that moment without weighing well what's going to be they're going to kill me or you know this is not going to work, work out well for me he knew what the truth was he believed in god he believed in the country god said he's going to bring us to he saw the land he understood how it could be good and he spoke up and he didn't think about the consequences at the time he did the right thing and you know what in the end of the day God did save his life. And not only did God save his life in that episode, but God told Moshe that that nation, um, that whole generation that complained and cried out all night, they're not going. They're not going in. It's only going to be the next generation that will go in. Everyone is going to die out except for him and Yehoshua, who eventually spoke up with Kalev. They're going to be the only two from that generation that get to enter the land. And not only did he get to enter the land, Kalev, but he got to um as an inheritance he wanted Chavron, which he at that point was the connection to spirituality uh there was no harbite at that time uh the only spiritual connection was the burial place of our forefathers and our and our avot and imahot the fathers and the mothers and he wanted that that special place of meaning and he got it for his act of bravery now what i'm not trying to say is speak up and everything will end up happily ever after and you'll get everything you want that's specifically not what i'm trying to say um and i don't even think that color got everything well i think he would trade all that in if the nation would have just believed and gone in on a good note on a high note but what i'm trying to say is is that sometimes we're put in a position when we find ourselves in a place where people are saying things that are ludicrous where people are saying things that we know go against what we've seen what we believe what we know to be true it's our obligation to find the strength like Kalev did not to sit there weighing everything once you let it go in your brain you start weighing everything you're not going to do it because it's a tough thing to do go with your gut when you know what's right and speak up for what's good and right and true in your eyes that you saw and you know to be you know he knew and he knew that the nation should know better the nation experienced all the miracles he did all the plagues the splitting of the sea the food that god brought out of thin air the man from heaven the the quails he had rained down they had meat they had everything they wanted and protection and miracles they should know that they'll be able to if god says they can enter this country and conquer it that they can do it i mean they had every reason to believe uh, and they chose uh a word to go on a word to not believe as opposed to everything they experienced in the last year which really should have led them to running into the land when they should have gone and so my point is is that when we're in a place and a time and we see people saying things that are wrong that are blatantly wrong and we know better, we should speak up because that's why we're put in that position to do so. And um, you know what? Sometimes we don't 
probably was blessed to see reward. Sometimes we don't see what the reward or the consequences will be, but that doesn't mean there won't be something good coming out of your action, even if you never get to see it. Uh, we know lots of stories of that in the Bible. Think of Ruth, we just came from Shuas. She doesn't know everything we knew that we got to read after and that, you know, the Messiah comes from her acts of goodness and uh, so many stories in the Bible and that they don't know, but sometimes you do the right thing, it will have an effect. It will have an impact whether you see it or not. So hang on to that, do what's right, have the courage. Uh, I say, keep that Kali spirit and God bless you, you know? So, you can do it. Shabbat shalom.